God, I earnestly seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water, I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and glory. When the Spirit of the Lord is. Spirit of the Lord is.
down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. And I want more of you, God. And I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. And I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. Freedom reigns. I want more of you, God. Freedom reigns in this place. Showers of mercy and grace. He's falling on every face. There is freedom. Praise God. Praise God. Take your seats. Take your seats. That's beautiful. Thank you, Paul, Dwayne, team. Great praise of worship. Oh, we're getting, this is Palm Sunday. You know what comes next. Celebration of his resurrection. Easter Sunday next week. Now.
spoke on um, prayer, how powerful prayer is. It was a great service. And uh, Wednesday always is something about midweek. But um, I talked about how Job prayed for his family every day, prayed for his sons and daughters every day. The Bible says that, Ch Job chapter 1. And then this is said in Job chapter 1, verse 10. The enemy, Satan, comes before the Lord, and the Lord says, God says, have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him in all the world. He says, yeah, of course. I can't touch him. Well, why? Hast not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. That's powerful, that because of prayer, because of continually praying, the Lord places a hedge of protection around you and your household. Now, you might not think prayer is that important. Prayer is vital, like breathing, breathing oxygen to a, a, a person. That's how important prayer is. And, and it, may, it brings a deeper relationship with the Lord. Plus, the main reason we pray, it glorifies the Father in heaven. We have, and I told the people last week, we prayed this prayer. The, we call it the prayer hedge prayer. And we prayed it last week, and I told the people, you know, I'm going to put that on paper and give it out Sunday morning. So, guys, go ahead. Everybody gets one. <coughs> this is a prayer that you can pray every day. So long as you believe it in your heart and you speak, speak it from your mouth, God will hear, and there will be a hedge of protection placed around you and your household, your family, the fruit of your hands, and all that you have. How many would like that, where, this, where Satan will say, I can't touch them. You've placed a hedge of protection around them. That's how powerful prayer is. And just to tell you how powerful prayer is, can you handle it, Teresa? All right, all right. Thank you, honey. How powerful prayer is when you go into a time of prayerlessness, that means you don't pray. You go into a time of prayerlessness, God considers that as of the pagans, of the heathen, because the heathen don't pray. But the saints of God pray. So we're going to pray this together. Is that okay? How many would like a hedge of protection put around them, their household, their finances, all that they have, I know I, I pray it all the time. Dwayne told me the other day, he prays to him, his wife prayed every morning. That's how powerful this is. So take it, this little piece of paper, and stick it or tape it to your mirror in the bathroom, because you all visit that, don't you? And, and instead of the first thing in the morning, instead of saying, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? You can pray this prayer. And see some mighty things happen in the name of Jesus. All right, hands up. Let's pray together. Read it off the screen or right from your little piece of paper there. You ready? Oh, Lord. And about all that I have on every side, bless the work of my hands and increase my substance in the land. Cause not the wicked to stretch forth their hands to touch me in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, that's good.
That's good. Hey, listen, we want to pray for Patty Stack. I, I'm just very concerned at this point. The Stack brothers, you know, they attend here and help us out. In fact, uh, uh, Jason is next door uh, ministering to the teens, and Robert is here with his lovely wife uh, ushering. And is Dad here too? Where's Dad? Dad, everything's going to be okay. Come on. Everything's going to be all right. Uh, his wife is, uh, her body needs a transplant immediately, a liver transplant immediately. It's beginning to fail. So, um, in Jesus' name. Brother, our prayers are with you. We're going to pray right now together as the family of God. You know something with God? I just walked by you. God told me something. You're going to go home and pray with him. You lost your husband. And now, pray for his wife that she'll live and not die. Come on, people. In Jesus' name. I, hey, listen, I know heaven's a good place, okay? But still, we're in these bodies, right? And God is still a healing, merciful God, right? Let's pray and believe God together right now. In Jesus' name, we pray for Patty. We pray for her strength. Strengthen her body. May this liver transplant come now in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for a miracle. I pray for your power to touch her, comfort her, reassure her that she is in your hands in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. That's always a hard thing. But, you know, God is able. God is able. Amen. Our prayers are with you and your family. In Jesus' name. All right. Palm Sunday. Really, we've had, we've added that name to this special uh, time, this special, the beginning of this special week. This, and the Bible says it's Holy Week, Passion Week, Holy Week. But because they were laying down palm branches as Jesus entered into Jerusalem, we thought it would be great to call it Palm Sunday. God never called it that. It's Holy Week. All right, is it wrong to say that? No, I, I call it Palm Sunday, but it's Holy Week because it's holy what Jesus did for us. Now, last week, I, I, I ended last week by talking about Jesus weeping. Here he's making his way to Jerusalem to uh, begin the process of eventually dying on the cross. This is the part where Jesus goes to Bethpage, which is right at right next to the Mount of Olives, and he'll go up the Mount of Olives. It was at the top of the Mount of Olives. He, he hesitated and looked down over Jerusalem and wept because of their unbelief. Oh, they'd be receiving him that morning, that day, but by the end of the week, they'd be crying, crucify him, crucify him. Their rejection of him made him weep because he came to seek and to save. But they did not believe he was the Messiah, although by the miracles it proved it. By the prophets of old it proved it. By his own words it proved it. By his heavenly Father, this is my son and whom am I well pleased, it proved it. But yet they rejected. The, the religious leaders rejected and the people go the way the religious leaders tell them to go. Now, in Bethpage, before he makes the ascent, he sends two of his disciples to go into the village and there bring a colt. You'll find a colt there. Bring the colt to me. And if the owner says anything, just tell him the master requires it and he'll give his permission. So this thought that people say they stole the donkey is wrong. So... Now they bring the colt to Jesus, and Jesus is set upon the colt. They put their, uh, make a little saddle for Jesus with their cloaks and things, and they, where is that anyway? Can you bring that to me? Robert, it's hanging right on the door over there, my cloak. 
It's right there, brother. Yeah. Can you bring that for me and help me with that real quick? I want to get into the feeling of this. Oh, I'm feeling it right now, brother. I'm feeling being in that time right now. Now, we want to read this scripture, but you have to, let me set the stage here. It's a very busy time for Jerusalem because it's the time of Holy Week, time of Passover. And everyone was required to come. So they estimate two and a half to three million people in Jerusalem spilling out uh, into the surrounding areas, pitching their tents, the time of uh, tabernacles, the Feast of Tabernacles, the tents of their uh, deliverance from Egypt. And here they're celebrating. And they hear Jesus is coming. Here he's on the colt. He rises to the top. He takes time to weep over Jerusalem. And then here he makes his descent down through the Kidron Valley into Jerusalem. Well, he can see the people are preparing. Remember, it was in Bethpage that Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, once again proving that he is God, the Son of God. And this news spread. People went ahead. Did you hear? Lazarus is alive. Jesus raised him from the dead, and the people were excited. And the people saw him as their king coming to liberate them from Roman tyranny, just as Moses liberated the people from the tyranny of the Pharaoh. Now, they were wrong in their thinking, but that's what motivated their excitement and, and their glee and their praising. And as Jesus approaches on that colt, colt, he begins to hear the praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. What a sight. Millions of people there, excited, shouting, no picketers, no signs saying, go home, Jesus. His popularity rating went through the ceiling. Everybody loved Jesus. Everybody wanted Jesus, except the religious people, the Pharisees. They thought Jesus was coming to liberate them and set up his kingdom on earth. But that was not the case at all. He was coming to liberate them, all right, from their sins. He was coming to establish a kingdom, all right, in their hearts. And soon, the temperature, temperament changed from praising to crying, crucify him, crucify him. Now, let's read our text here. Matthew 21, 1 through 11. I think this morning is going to be fun. It's going to be enlightening. You're going to open your minds to a lot of things that I'm going to be sharing with you that you might not have known. And it will just bring a reality of the time, the era, and what the people were thinking. And, and here comes the Messiah. Why on a donkey, not a white horse, and so on. Okay. Let's read it. Matthew 21, 1 through 11, straight through, please. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethpage, under the Mount of Olives. Then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied, and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say in aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the fowl of an ass. And the disciples went, and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from trees, and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before, and that, befo and that followed, cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus. This is Jesus. I love it. Who is this? This is Jesus in his glory. He has done it. 
Wow. Boy, I'm sorry, Kyle. I got excited. <laughs> this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. Amen. Someone say, this is Jesus. King of glory. <laughs> oh, you got to love it. You got to love what's going on at this time. I mean, I want to be there. I, I want to be a part of it. I want to see the master coming. I want to hear the praises. I want to be part of the praises and the shouts. Now, verse 1. Let's take a quick look verse by verse. It just be good for us. Come on. Verse 1. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were coming to Bethpage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples. Go ahead. Verse 2. Saying unto them, Go into the village over against you. Straight away you shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. It, this account's found in this Palm Sunday account, this Holy Week account, Jesus' triumphal entry, is found in all four Gospels. Now let me ask you, if it was only found in, and talked about in one Gospel, would that be okay? Of course. Once is fine, but each writer wrote about it at inspiration of the Holy Ghost, so it would get in our minds. Repetition is the way we learn. So you go to each book, and you're going to read it and see it, the four Gospels. All right. And he sends two, two disciples, and, and, uh, and the other account is just says they brought the colt. Doesn't mean they didn't bring the mama. Just says they brought the colt, and he was set upon the colt. We know that. That's a given. He rode a colt, a, 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 a younger uh, donkey, the mother's child. What do you want to call it? A foal. That's what he rode into Jerusalem. But here, the only account says he brought, they brought two donkeys, the mom and the baby, right? The child. And it came. Three. I think that's interesting. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say, Lord, have need of them. Straight away he will send them. Three, four. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet thousands of years ago, saying, Isaiah and Zechariah, tell ye the daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass and a colt, an ass and a colt full of an ass. Sitting on an ass, that ass being a full, a colt of an ass. Okay, now some believe the two came, and because the ascent of the Mount of Olives, Olives was so rocky and so treacherous that Jesus might have rolled, uh, rode the older, the mother, the female donkey, and then reaching the top, he switched over to the colt and rode it on in, descent and on in. And that makes sense, but it doesn't say that. It says he rode the colt. He was set upon the colt. And it says so in all the Gospels. Here's John 12, 14. John 12, 14. So one reason why he, why he rode a colt into Jerusalem, it fulfilled Scripture. It fulfilled the, pro the prophets of old, what they said the Messiah would do. He did it. 14 says, and Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon as it is written. All right, and Luke 19.35, it's in all of them. Luke 19.35, quickly, please. And they brought him to Jesus, and they cast their garments upon the colt, and they sat Jesus thereon. So make no doubt about it, he rode the colt into Jerusalem. Why not a white horse? Because that's not what the prophet said. Us Westerners, we need to change our thinking about the donkey. It's not some stupid animal. It's just good to carry wood and, and labor. Not at all. The donkey in the Middle East is held in higher esteem than the horse. Kings rode donkeys. Abraham rode a donkey. Isaac rode a donkey. And here Jesus is riding a colt into Jerusalem. Pilate would make his parade all the time to show strength to be riding a white horse. That represented war and power. Jesus riding on a donkey represented meekness, humility, and peace. 
prophets would ride the donkey. The donkey was God's animal. Did you know that? In fact, in Deuteronomy 17, 16, 17, 16, their gathering horses as a nation was forbidden by God. What? But, ye, but he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to get horses. Why? Now we understand the scripture in the book of Psalm that says, don't trust in chariots and horses. Now you know why. Because if God allowed them to do that, they would put their trust in the might of their horses and chariots as the other pagan kings did. So the Bible says in the book of Psalm, don't trust in horses and chariots, but trust in the name of the Lord. So he, you, God permitted donkeys to be used as the number one mode of transportation over the camel even. I just told you kings rode horses, prophets, presidents, and their sons. Hallelujah. How important is the donkey? Well, it's one of two animals only recorded in uh, Scripture that God spoke through them, allowed to audibly speak. The first was what? The serpent, the reptile. The second is a donkey. Balaam's donkey spoke, and that's found in, what is it? Numbers 22, 27, and 28. Numbers 22, 27, and 28. Go ahead, Kyle. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he smote the ass with a staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she said unto him, Balaam, what have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me with these three times? This is interesting. Here, uh, Balaam uh, was a rogue prophet, a mercenary prophet, hired by Syria to curse God's people. So he's riding his donkey to a mountaintop in order to look over the encampment of God's people to curse them. God sent an angel to kill him. And here the angel stands in the road. The donkey sees it and begins to maneuver around it. Balaam gets upset, starts hitting the donkey. He doesn't see the angel, but the donkey did. After three times of beating this donkey, the donkey says, what have I done to you? I'm trying to protect you. And you know something? Balaam was so mad, he actually spoke back to the donkey. How many know when you hear and speak back to your pet, you got trouble? He didn't think anything of it. The donkey's talking. Oh, I know what you're thinking. You thought Mr. Ed was the first speaking animal, the horse. Of course, of course. Horse is a horse, of course, of course, but never mind. But here's the reality of this donkey speaking audibly. Why did you hit me? Well, there was an angel there who was going to kill you. Of course, Balaam repented and did not curse God's people and, and so on. But just to show you, God used a donkey to communicate. To his master. Proverbs 12.10 speaks about something about the beast, about animals. God care, how many know God cares about the animals? Don't you think otherwise? A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast. You better be careful how you handle your animals. You'll be held accountable. Write the letter. Come on, I dare you. It says it right there. The righteous, the people of God, the believer, regardeth the life of their beast. If you own a pet, along comes a responsibility to care for that pet. Am I right or am I wrong here? But the wicked are cruel. They disregard tender mercies and are cruel. Hallelujah. I thought I'd just throw that in. I know Sharice appreciates that one. Right? Are you PETA or PETA or whatever that group is called? What is that? I don't know. Talking donkey. 
Well, if he can use an ass to talk, he can use us. He uses me. He all. <laughs> Can I give you uh, another scripture on that horse restriction? It's true. It's in the Bible. Isaiah 31.1. I forgot to give it to you, so I'm going to backtrack. Isaiah 31.1 because it's important. Read it, Kyle. Isaiah 31. There was a horse restriction that God placed on the people of God. He says, don't gather them. You'll begin to trust in them. You know, I don't have any problem with people gathering wealth and gathering money. I like money. It's the love of money. That's the root of all evil. When, when money replaces your love for God, you got trouble. And that's what happened with horses and chariots. It proved the might of the army. Well, the might of God's people is in the army of the, of the Lord, right? God says, I'll fight your battles. And whoever's against you, I'll be against. Amen? Go ahead, Kyle. Woe to them. They go down to Egypt for help. And stay on horses, and trust in chariots, because they are many, and in horsemen, because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yeah, there was this horse restriction. Of course, it was broken by many of the kings, and it did not go well for them. Because it was soon, uh, they would be worshiping all kinds of crazy things. I thought that was interesting myself. How many knew there was a horse restriction? On God's people, I didn't know that. I guess that's what study does for you, huh? Amen, amen, and amen. The donkey, the premier animal, <laughs> one of the first mentioned in the Bible. Let's get back to our text now. I think we're on verse 4. Or verse, let's see. Verse 8. Let's go to verse 8, please. 21, 8. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees, palm branches, and strawed them in the way. Nine. And the multitudes that went before, and the, why am I reading, Kyle? <laughs> Go ahead, read, Kyle. Wonder why I was getting tired. Come on, go ahead. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Come on, someone say Hosanna. Let's say that. Hosanna to the, the, the last half of that, starting with Hosanna. Raise your hands. Come on. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hallelujah. Now, do you know the legitimate uh, definition of Hosanna? It means more than just praise. It means save us, we pray. Prosper us, we pray. And that's from Psalm 118. Save us, we pray. Say that with me. Save us, we pray. Prosper us, we pray. The people were crying that out. Master, King, Jesus, save us from the tyranny of the Romans. Heal us. Give us peace again. Prosper us. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. That should be our prayer today. Lord, save us. Heal us. Make us well. Protect us. Deliver us. Prosper us. Lord, and G lift your hands right now. I'm, on a, I'm supposed to do this right now. Lord, I pray, prosper your people in this room right now. Every household, every man, every woman, prosper the fruit of their hands. Prosper them financially, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Prosper them. Heal them. In Jesus' name, amen. Save us, I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. You receive that? In Jesus' name. Other scriptures that talk about this, 
it's great. John 12, 13, Kyle. John 12, 13. There will be a couple of scriptures in John 12 now. John 12, 13, go ahead. Took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him, and cried, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. They took branches of palm trees, went forth to meet him and cried, millions of people now. Now, palm trees were plentiful all over the place. It was, it's one of two of God's trees, one being the olive tree, the other right next to it, the palm tree. Did you know that? The palm tree spoke about in King James over 500 times. People of God, the righteous are spoken as palm trees. Now, how many of you have hands with palms in it? Do you have palms? Can you lift your hands up and put your palms out? Uh, uh, come here, brother. Paul, come here for a second, quickly. Right here. Give me the palm hands up, please. See, we have palm branches as well. It's called our arms and hands. I said we have them as well. It's called our arms and our hands. So we have the palm branch. And the palm tree, ladies and gentlemen, ordained to praise God. Give me some praise palm tree branch action, my friend. Come on, palms out, palms up. Praise the Lord. Cry out, Hosanna. Here, take a real one and wave it. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Keep it going, brother. Keep it going. Oh, that feels good. Yeah. I've always wanted to lay on a couch with grapes and have that. What? Oh, and you wouldn't like it either? Thank you, brother. I'll give it to somebody to wave during the, the service here. Sharice, are you going to stay or are you going to leave? You stand? Can you be the palm? Don't hit. Yeah, be careful. Be careful. Amy, hey, be the palm waver. One more time. Palm branches up. Hosanna. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, today being Palm Sunday, wherever, wherever you go, in Safeway, Fries, Walmart, at home, whatever, I want you to go in there waving your hands like this. Robbery, robbery, no. Raving your hands like this. Somebody's going to ask you, what in the world are you doing? Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I'm waving my palm branches. There's one in every crowd. <laughs> I got to tell you, it's okay. Now, before I go on, is it okay if I take a little break right now? Before I go on, i got to tell you about the palm tree. As I studied the palm tree, I was just elated. Because the palm trees in the Middle East bear a fruit. And that fruit is dates. Not the ones on the islands and coconuts and all that. It's dates. There they are right there. Isn't that cool? Those are all dates. Now, the date is a very powerful, it's God's fruit. It is more important and more vital to sustain life than any other food on planet Earth. Study it. There are more nutrients, where's Laura? There's more nutrients and vitamins in dates, God's fruit, than anything else in the world. They say if you could only pick one food to eat, not water now, we need water. Not one food to eat to sustain your life for any given time, lengthy time, take dates. You'll live on dates. The sugar, the natural sugar in dates is an instant pick-me-up. The soldiers would walk with them. The disciples had them in their pouches. They're just small, cute little things right there. And you pop a date, a fresh date in your mouth, and you eat that, and immediately you get a burst. A lot better than a Red Bull or a Snickers. It's God. I'm telling you, look at me. It's God's fruit. I'm telling you. 
I'm going to start eating dates. Jesus ate them. The disciples ate them. That was the preferred fruit in all the Middle East, still is today. Powerful for the size. We're going to take some. I'll tell you what, if you come walk with me on Friday, I'm bringing a big sack. Lord, help me get them. A big sack of dates. And when you start fading down and start dropping, I'm going to shove one in your mouth. And as you go down, I'm going to shove one in your mouth. You're going to jump up and go, whoa! No, that's what it says. That's what it says. Dates. I'm to palm trees. The dates on palm. I wish I could. And the thing is, I've eaten them in the past, and I like them. They're just really expensive, but I'm going to bring some. I'm going to bring some along with us. But look, if you want God's candy, seriously, you thought the prune was? Ho, ho, ho. Dates does the body good. More nutritional value in a date than any other fruit on planet Earth. Serious now. No wonder the palm tree is associated in the Bible with the tree of life. I think I'm going to cry. I'm going to have dates all the time. I'm going to put them out in the lobby. Oh, yeah. Praise God. Remind me. In the lobby. Guys, in the lobby. Bowls of dates. Yeah! God's fruit. You come in with one of those power drinks, I'm going to rip it out of your hand and put a date in there. Try that. God's fruit. And he'll bless you for it. Abraham rode a donkey. Jacob rode a don donkey. Absalom, David's son, rode a donkey. Moses and much, much, many more in Jesus' name. Palm trees. I don't know why I just said that. I just saw it in my notes. A palm tree. A couple quick things about a palm tree. It's upright. And if God's people is considered olive trees and and, and and palm trees, a palm tree is upright. We are to be upright before the Lord. It's plentiful. Fruit, as you can see, it bears a ton of fruit. And as we are, as God's palm trees, his people to bear fruit as well. A and then the elasticity of the palm tree is incredible. It could take a heavy load and still stand upright. Isn't that a lesson for us, that we can go through trials and troubles and still be Upright, not bent over like other trees, but upright with our palms pointed up. Give me some palm branch action right now. Hosanna. Some of your palms are dirty. That's all right. God still accepts that. Clean your palms when you get home. Are we having a good time? Are we learning something? Okay. John 12, this is great. John 12, 17 through 18. Nothing about the palm tree. But that's what they cut, and that's what they threw down on the floor. Where's my palm branch? Oh, my gosh. Jerese. Okay. As Jesus came close, they began to throw palm branches down. They took their cloaks, and they laid them down before the Lord. As the donkey colt brought Jesus into Jerusalem, and people are packed all around. And they're shouting, screaming, hallelujahs, and praises, hosannas. And he's going on this trail, this bed of cloaks and palm branches. Hallelujah. What a sight. As their king, received king. A few days later, king no more, but now put with robbers and thieves to be crucified. Are we there, Kyle? Come on, go ahead. 
the people therefore that was with him, when he called Lazarus out of his grave and raised him from the dead, bear record. And 18. For this cause, the people also met him. What cause? The word that Lazarus was raised from the dead, probably walking right alongside Jesus. And it spread like wildfire. Everybody wanted to come see this miracle worker. And I mean everybody. Check this out. 12, 20 through 21. Jump to verse 20 to 21, Kyle. Oh, this is great. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came, therefore, of, to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Do you understand what that's saying? The Gentiles came. This is Passover. But yet the Greeks, the Gentiles, heard of this Messiah, of this Jesus, and they came to see and to say, who is this? This is Jesus. Wow. How many knew there was Greeks and Gentiles there along with the Jews? They all came. Why? Because the Bible says there's neither Jew nor Gentile, neither male nor female. We are all one in Christ Jesus. Give me some palm branch action out there. Hallelujah. Now, Kyle, next verse, verse 9 again, please. Verse 9, Hosanna in the highest. Save us, I pray. Verse 9, go ahead, read it one more time. And the multitude that went before, that followed, cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the now Lord. Now right into 10. Hosanna 10. in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And 11. And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. I love that. I, we're going to close with that song, This is Jesus. You want to wear this? Come here. Neither male nor female. Oh, that's got anointing. That's got anointing all over it. Uh, now to finish the deal. There you go. Let's see how you look. Come here. Come here. Stand in front of the people over here. Come on. Let's see how she looks. Neither Jew nor Gentile, male nor female. We're all one in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is Jesus. Remember back in Matthew 16. Kyle, we won't go there. I'm almost out of time. Remember back in Matthew 16, Jesus was with his disciples, and he, he asked his disciples, who do they say that I am? And the disciples spoke up, probably Peter as the mouthpiece for all the disciples. Well, they say you, you are John the Baptist, a prophet, or the prophet Jeremiah. The reason they associated Jesus with the prophet of uh, Jeremiah, because he wept. And Jeremiah was considered the weeping prophet. This must be uh, reincarnation of Jeremiah. He's come back. No, 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 saints. He did not come back. This is Jesus, the king of glory, the son of God, the Christ. And so then Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? And including Judas... They said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, on this I will build my church. What? Not Peter. What did he build his church on? The revelation of who he is. And if we hold to it. Now, I've learned a long time ago, there are some battles, some mountains I don't want to spill blood on. I just let it go. But there's some you'll fight to the finish on. And it's who Jesus is, it's one, we will fight to the last man. He is the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, the gates of hell will not prevail against you. So long as the church apprehends who Jesus is, accepts him, stands on the revelation, he is the Christ, they cannot and will not ever fail in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Woo! Praise God. Now, I got to ask you, who looked better in the robe? Serious? No, 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 no. She won't get mad. Who? Uh, come on. Uh, forget it. <laughs> forget it. All the city was moved. This is Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jesus, your king, your Lord, your God. One last verse. I got three minutes. One last verse. Luke 19. Luke 19. Bring me one, Bob. Luke 19, 39 and 40. I need the band up here, please. See, I'm getting all undone here. What are these? Are you kidding me? Do we have enough for everybody? Well, just pass them. The husband and wives can split one. What? You don't want to eat after him? Come here, come here, Robert. Open it up and pass them out. Let's go. Husband and wives, go ahead. Take one and split it. Everybody else can have one. Go ahead. This side. Come on, let's do it. I need one of those. As I talk, just go ahead and do it. Is that or This is fun. Who said church wasn't to be a blast? Huh? We're learning something. The devil's mad. Let's go. Come on, guys. Husband and wives, take one, please. Good. Get ready. You're going to go all day, girl. Sure. <laughs> Compliments of somebody here. I don't know Check who. One, two. That was great. Yeah, get them out. That's fine. You don't mind, do you, people? Sure. Get them out to you. Yeah. Beautiful. That's God's fruit you're putting in your mouth. Go tell her to turn me on. Good. Turn the thing Good. On for a lot me. of people eat dates on a regular basis. Dang it. But we all should. I'm going to buy some. All right. Let's read this. Are you ready? Luke 19, 39. And some of the... Come on, Kyle. Go ahead. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace... The stones would immediately cry out. Remember I told you, three million people singing the praises of God. That's massive. Can you imagine what three million people sound like? Kids screaming, yelling, women with their palm branches and throwing their cloaks down on the ground and all that. They're praising the Lord. They're thanking God. Hosanna, Hosanna. Well, the Pharisees get upset and go to the master and say, Hey, tell your disciples to shut up. Basically, that's what they said. Quiet them. Hold their peace. What does that mean? Close their mouths. And Jesus says, the very stones will cry out if these people hold their peace and stop their praise. Now, let's all get real quiet. They're still handing them out. I think this side needs them over here. Everybody gets one, including the top. Hey, De hey, Bob, up here. Everybody's got to have God's fruit. Now let's get real quiet. Come on. I don't hear nothing. So somebody somewhere is praising the Lord. Because if praise stopped on planet Earth for God Almighty, the very rocks will cry out. And I believe that. So guess what? Along with the date that you're eating, as you leave, we have these praise stones. They're reminders to praise God at all times for you. You can take one. They've been cleaned. They're beautiful. Hey, hey, where's mine? I'm going to eat it. Put it right there. Dwayne, stay away from that. On the way out, the ushers are holding beautiful baskets full of these rocks, these stones. Feel free to take one.
Put it in your pocket. Mine will be up here the whole time, all this week, in my shirt pocket, my pants pocket, because I'm always reaching into my pocket to get something out of it, guys. Am I right? Here, I'm going to give you this one, brother. I'll get another one. That's been on my person, if that means anything. I'm telling you, you'll feel it in your pocket. You'll reach your hand in, and you'll touch it, and you'll go, oh, I praise you, Jesus. I praise you. Seriously. Ladies, you can put it in your purse or on the nightstand. When you wake up, you'll see that rock and go, oh, yeah. Lord, I give you praise. I give you glory. Everybody stand up. He's worthy of all our praise. Amen. Come on, I want you to take your palm branch. Come on up here. Get up there with Dwayne. Get up there with Dwayne. It's okay. It's all right. Get up there. This is Jesus. Sharice, you know this song too. Get up there with her so she doesn't feel alone. So come on. Go ahead. Get up there. Get up there with on the other side of Dwayne. Dwayne, you got two, one on either side. The words are up on the screen. You can sing. You don't need a mic. No woman needs a mic. No, 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 I didn't mean that. I did not mean that. Uh-oh. Get me behind me, Stephen. I love you. Hey, did you enjoy your date? I'm telling you, power packed. We're going to have bowls of them all the time in, in church. We're going to feel free to take them when you come to church. It's your daily date. Oh, look what he made. Little palm branch. I'm glad they're teaching the kids to praise the Lord. Are you ready to do it, brother? This is Jesus. Listen, God bless you. Hope to see you tonight. 6 p.m. Pastor N is preaching tonight in Jesus' name. Remember, palms up. Palms up, people. Come on.